I find that interesting. I, again, I, I, I haven't, I haven't experienced this stuff. I like, I, I don't know. And I feel fortunate that I haven't had to, but at the same time, I feel guilty that I don't, I can't completely relate, which is may sound odd, but I, again, I've had people sit in your chair and I've, I've talked to so many people and so many, whether it's veterans, first responders or whatever that have really been challenged with the experiences that they've gone through their in their lives. And so what you're describing is not, not dissimilar from any of that. And they're oftentimes looking for some outlet yeah. and, and it can be a lot of different things. Um, and again, you come from an art music background and you know, it just, it happens to be knives, but uh, for you now, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's the outlet. I wonder just, I'm just going to be kind of blunt or frank about this. Like, <sighs> Is the coping mechanism, does the coping mechanism really help you in, mm. in, in creating the knife, right? Or is it just kind of an escape from the reality? Or is it both? That's a good question. I would say it's a little bit of both. Okay. Certain days it's the burying tool, right? And other days it's like, man, I feel really rejuvenated. Um, it's just like a really good workout, you know? Mm. You're having a really bad day and you go hit the gym for like an hour and you're like, man, I feel like I can think clearly. Um, I can think more clearly about what just happened and you can kind of sort through it. And that's how I feel about making knives is like, I can go out there and I can be doing those tasks and be thinking at the same time, like, Hey, this is a really hard call. It's okay. It was a really hard call or X, Y, and Z. Um, just like Brene was talking about on your podcast the other day, mm. like, X, Y, and Z wasn't your fault. You did everything you could. Um, and you've, you've kept up your training. You did everything you could. And yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, just circle back, kind of lost my train of thought there, but I think, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, but I don't think it's for me, the end all be all right. Gotcha. Um, I mentioned earlier that I years ago went to therapy and that's still something that if I feel like I'm mm. going towards a certain direction, I'll go do that. Cause I've always been, well, not always since then I've been the, I better get ahead of this before it gets ahead of me kind of mentality. Um, so important, man. It is. And it took a lot of hard lessons to learn that. Like what? Uh, that first divorce, man. Okay. Yeah. That divorce. Uh, that's when I was like, man, I better get ahead of things before they get ahead of me. Uh, within the span of just a tangent within the span of that week, my ex-wife left me. My friend died of cancer and I lost my job. Jesus, that's a lot. And that was like the, that was like the, you know, the saying like the coming to Jesus moment was like, you're, you're not doing something right and you better figure out what it is. Um, I wasn't working out at the time. I was like 210, not working out at all. Okay. Out of shape. Um, just drinking. And, um, uh, yeah, I started going to therapy. My my buddy actually he moved in with me. He uh was a Navy veteran. He was like, You gotta get your ass into shape. So okay. started going on runs, working out more, and that's kind of when I shifted towards that law enforcement direction. So it kind of started a while ago. Um, that was now ten years ago. Um of uh, I don't think that's that long ago, but uh of learning how to address those things before they get ahead, you know, get ahead of, get out of control. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of what knife making is for me now is, is Zen and out trying to get ahead of things, clearing my head for a little bit so that I can, you know, have a a clearer thought pattern when I go back and address things. Yeah. So again, I, this is not stuff that, um, that's unfamiliar to me. Yeah. Everybody has their own story and everybody has their own, um, everybody needs to find their own sort of coping mechanism, right? Yeah. And uh, that there's not a right or a wrong to any of that. Uh, and with the exception of it starts to impact you in an unhealthy way or the people around you in your life in an unhealthy way, that being like drinking or drugs or, yeah. you know, I've heard sex addi- addiction. I've heard just, just poor behaviors that ultimately get people in trouble um, and just create more problems for them down the line. Yeah. Uh, that, th- that ends up being a real issue for them. So I wonder like with the therapy and the, um, 
you know, the knives being sort of part of that uh, to some extent, but the, th- the therapy piece, was that, was that something that was introduced to you by somebody else and, you know, brought to you as a, Hey, this is a solution for your thing. Or did you come to that on your own? Uh, no, it was definitely other people. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. I, I've always been pretty stubborn. Everyone that knows me will say I'm a pretty stubborn person. Like I got this, I can, I can handle it on my own. And, uh, it kind of took yeah, my parents, um, their influence. Um, and at the time, shortly thereafter, I had another roommate who was a deputy with Santa Clara. And he was like, hey, man, I've seen some jacked up stuff. It's okay to handle your business. You're not less of a man. If anything, you're getting yourself prepared for the next big thing. Um, so definitely took a lot of outside. Hey, you, you better go do this. Cause you got to take care of yourself. Did you find that a hard step to make or were there people outside of people encouraging you to do this? Was there a hesitation beyond the, I guess what you formally stated, like, Oh, I don't want to be a wuss, you know, about this yeah. whole thing. Like, was there a hesitation? Like, was there, was there, were there fears that got in the way of this for you? Or did you kind of jump right in going, well, all these people are telling me to do it. These are people I love, people I trust, people that are looking out for me. Like, I'm just going to do it. Because I've heard lots of things about, like, I don't want to do this as a law enforcement officer or as a, you know, a firefighter. And you're playing both roles here. It's, yeah. it's a, there's a lot of weight there, right? Like, of if I do that, there's a stigma attached or it could be a stigma attached. Like, I, I could lose trust with, you know, my fellow officers or firefighters or, or whatever else was there a hesitation there or were you just kind of i'm all in um i definitely took some some uh i don't want to say nagging but uh, you know a lot of like a lot of encouraging hey man you should really do this you should really do this you should really do this and for a while i was like ah, i'm good i'm good and even the first few times that i went to uh talk to my therapist it was like silence you know awkward silence of like so you're holding back so, you mean? so tell me about this and i'm like it was fine it's that that term right there i mean i hear that term so yeah. often like no i'm fine man i'm fine yeah which you're, is a total lie you're not fucking fine yeah you're you're, t- you're you're not fine at all yeah like or we wouldn't be having this conversation right now uh, yeah we wouldn't be sitting in this chair how long did it take you to decide to be okay with not being fine uh Luckily, pretty quickly. Good. Uh, Because I had a lot of encouragement from friends. And, you know, as first responders, uh, unfortunately, we eat our own, as the saying goes, of like, of, uh, you know, if, if, what if someone finds out here that I'm in therapy? Mm -hmm. What are they going to think? Are they going to think I'm weak, that I can't cover them, that I'm not strong enough to handle things, um, that I'm going to go to a call and freeze up? You know, there's always that in the back of your mind. And you certainly don't want that reputation. And, you know, it's, it's in your head more than it is actual fact, right? And especially nowadays where luckily my department is, if we have a critical incident, it's like, hey, everybody, come to this meeting. We're all going to talk about it. If you need additional therapy, we have stress uh, officers, you know, assigned so you can call them 24-7 and talk to them and things like that. So I've been fortunate. Um, I haven't had to use them, thank- thankfully, but... Um, I think that's always in the back of your head, but having the encouragement from friends and family of like, Hey man, because all, you know, all these people knew me as marketing Andrew, right. Working from home. Right. Right. You know? And so having loved ones tell you that you've changed so much within a year is, uh, it's kind of like, Oh shoot, man, I better, I better, you know, address what I need to address. So, I just a couple of different ways to handle that. I mean, I've, I've talked to a lot of people, like I said, and you know, a lot of people really push back on that. Like, no, I'm fine. Yeah. You no, know, I'm fine. I, I know there's nothing going on and they go about their day or they find some other coping mechanism that might not be so entirely helpful or yeah, really healthy. Uh, I mean, you mentioned the drinking, which tends to come up a lot and I look in my own life, in my, my challenging, more challenging times that I, I found myself drinking more than I would typically, you know, drink and knowing that I'm doing it yeah, and kind of knowing why I'm doing it at the same time. But that being said, like not really crediting 
um, or giving weight to the fact that like, dude, you're doing this cause you're trying to block stuff out. Everything. You're trying to numb shit out. Like yeah. you're, you're really trying to calm it down. Yeah.